Um, his name goes before him. He's someone who is recognized, respected, and, and people listen when it comes to what he has to say about investing on the continent and the country. I remember even before moving back here three years ago, part of my research and studying was just listening to some of the stuff he was saying about what was going on in the economy here and what was going on in Ethiopia. And then uh, that and various other factors led me to, to return back and get involved in business and, and setting up here. So uh, it is with great, great pleasure that I have the privilege of welcoming up uh, Zamedina Nagatu today. So can we hear it for him? One of the things that I, I really respect about Zamedina is his schedule right now is, is off the charts. If you thought you were busy, you need to look at his schedule. And he, he's been traveling all over the world right now just speaking on various things. You were in Canada this week. You were uh, at an investment forum on finance yesterday. You've got stuff tomorrow. And so um, I'm very, very grateful that uh, you could uh, come and speak to us today. So thank you so much, Zamedina. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure, as you said. We've been trading uh, phone calls and emails and text and what's up for about a year now, right? Yeah, it's very true. So a year ago, I accepted, and for obvious reasons, uh, I had to cancel. But I'm very glad to be here. I see an amazing full house. Isn't there like a fire marshal here? Ah, uh, yes. Isn't there like a number that says you can't exceeding capacity thing? Uh, good question. In America, this is always the first thing, so... Zamedina, uh, maybe, I, I don't think there's anyone in here who, who doesn't know who you are, but maybe by way of introduction, you could just tell us who you are and uh, what has got you to here today. Right. I think the first thing I should have done is take off my tie, because mm -hmm. everybody's very, very casual. Uh, but I came from work, so, and I also want to pretend to look respectable. <laughs> um, so I figured I put on my tie. Anyways, again, thank you very much for having me here. You asked me something about what I do, how I got here. There's not a whole lot to tell, right? So um, I, I always talk, I, I don't talk about my personal life, of course. I always talk about, I only talk about my personal life once on television. I regretted it, so I'm not repeating it. <laughs> um, and I, I, there's a reason why I say that. And I, I'll, I'll be very frank about it. Um, a couple, three years ago, I did a TV interview. Usually, you know, I talk about boring stuff, GDPs, economic growth, entrepreneurship. <laughs> Some of you doze off halfway through that, right? But uh, about two years ago, this interviewer, she was very convincing. She said, before we talk about the economic aspects of all these things you talk about, why don't you delve in a little bit into your personal life? I was very reluctant, but I said, okay, and we're doing it at my house, so I felt you know, the environment is comfortable and all that. Anyways, so we start, she started asking me, how did you get to Ethiopia? And that will answer your, your question. I said, well, I moved to Ethiopia not because there was anything to do 20 years ago. In fact, there was nothing in 98. Uh, but I moved here because I see a lot of very young, very beautiful Ethiopian women here, right? You know how we met men, we come from America? <laughs> the minute we get off Bole, right? I mean, the, where are the men yeah. in this room? <laughs> Many diaspora here, I'm telling you. Yeah, exactly. You. you know what happens to us, right? Before, uh, the minute we get off of Bole Airport, and then we drive, before we get to Muscal Square, we propose four times, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I told this story to this lady, who is very, she's a very good, uh, you know, interviewer. So I told her the story that, in my case, at least, I had the willpower to wait until I got to Mescal Square <laughs> to propose, right? <laughs> so anyways, I met a woman on a Thursday, and I was in Ethiopia for the first time since I was a kid. I met her on a Thursday, and we got married on Monday. What? There's a reason why I'm telling you, especially the men, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking me how I got here, right? I'm, yeah. I'm going to connect it to the boring stuff that I talk about, right? So what happened was, on Monday, we went to Mazagajabi. I used to live, at that time, I used to live in Latin America. I was based in Buenos Aires, and my, sh my goods were being shipped to Sao Paulo, Brazil, because I was being transferred. So I had 10 days. So I actually remember calling my dad. He never left Ethiopia, by the way. The Derek, he said, would not get him out of here. We were the only ones who left. So I called my dad. I said, I'm coming to Ethiopia. I said, no, there's nothing to do for you to stay. This was in 95. 
I know most of you were not born in 1995, okay? Those of you in this room. Anyways, so he said, go somewhere else. I said, I want to come down. So I was here for 10 days. I meet this girl, and I wanted to marry her on a Monday. We go to Mazagajavit, and you know how Ethiopian bureaucracy is. It's very beautiful, right? <laughs> uh, this is a true story, guys. So we go to Mazagajavit. And they said, why are you here? And we said, we want to get married. And they said, how long you known each other? And then they said, Mizikra la choy. And even our families were not exactly sure we were getting married, let alone to give us to be a Mizikra, right? So they said, you have to come back in a month with a witness. And I said, we don't have a month. So that night, we got on a plane, went back to my hometown in Virginia. And the beauty of America, getting in is easy. So we go to the courthouse in Fairfax County. The county clerk, they looked at us, and they said, what are you guys here for? We want to get married. Here's the form. We paid like $30. <laughs> it took 15 minutes, and we got married. And, my, and my, my wife now, then, I mean, at that time, she said, OK. So she said, what do you do for a living? Where do you live? <laughs> I am telling you. She said, are you married? Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? This is how we got to know. Anyways, so I managed to convince her to live with me for about almost three and a half years in Brazil. But all the time, she said, I'm not living here. I said, okay, we moved to America. She said, I'm not living in America. She's a diehard Abisha, okay? <laughs> Even though she was half Italian, half Abisha, she was more Abisha than any of us. She said, after four years, she said, she gave me an ultimate. <laughs> she was commuting between Sao Paulo and Addis for about four years. And you know, if you saw her at that time, you'd know why I married her, right? I mean, she was, <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll qualify for Vogue magazine cover and all that, <laughs> plus the personality. Anyways, after about four years, uh, I know I'm taking up a lot of time here, but I'm going to talk no, to you no, about no, how I got here. After about four years, she said, it's either the marriage or the career. And it was not very difficult for me to decide which one. So that's how I ended up in Ethiopia. Wow. In 1998. Wow. 20 years ago, when there was nothing to do, nothing to invest. There was actually nothing to do outside of the house. Okay? But in hindsight, it turned out to be the best decision I ever made. Okay? <laughs> so for those of you who were born before 1998, which is very few of you, you remember... In fact, the highlight after I moved here, and we, we, we built a factory, actually, because there was nothing to do. We can't be employed. Right? I, I give up my career. I did all the things that I did in Latin America. I did a lot of investment banking work, a lot of private equity stuff and all that. And I come here. I'm stuck in the house. There's nothing. But we came with a plan, actually, to build a factory. So in Akake, it took us about a year to acquire land. I think the girl before me, I admire her. She got land. 5,000, oh, there she is, 5,000 square meters, I have to tell you. Uh, I can relate to what you probably went through, but you got 5,000. <laughs> and that was recently, right? 20 years ago, when there was nothing in Akaki, it was just complete farmland. It took me a year, took us a year to acquire farm, uh, a land, 4,000 square meters, to build a factory in 20 years ago. You know what we were going to build? We actually started to. Femcare patch, more days. Diapers, bandages, healthcare products. Here's the thing, though, and this is something for all of you to learn. In Africa, things have a way of changing your carefully laid out plan. <laughs> I came from America. I've spent years doing investment banking, valuations, due diligence. I had like a 100-page due diligence report. I've covered all the bases, all the risk factors, except we left out one thing from the checklist. War with Eritrea. <laughs> oh. It was not on the checklist. Because we could not have imagined. A month after we started building the factory, Eritrea invaded Ethiopia. As some of you old enough, as I said, to remember, everything stopped. Everything. We almost went bankrupt. But this is the thing, and uh, that's one of the things I liked about... Uh, the, the paper factories, you talked about the persistence that's needed. We didn't give up on Ethiopia, though. We failed. For us, it was a very sizable, I mean, $4 million in 1998, for us, was a lot of money. That was what we had budgeted. 
That was a lot of the savings, a lot of the earnings we had. And for us to be stuck with a project that we couldn't execute really disappointed us. In fact, for a while, we thought about packing our bags and going back to America or Latin America, which I know very well, and do what we were doing there. In fact, for, for in the beginning, when I first came here, I was always complaining that there was no bitch, <laughs> no beaches, because I came. We used to spend every weekend in Rio, right? My wife says, don't worry, we have Langano. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to Langano, first time I go, I mean, listen, with all due respect, right? Those of you who know Langano, I mean, it's not exactly a beach. <laughs> <laughs> the water is brown, <laughs> okay? But it was beautiful because she was there, and we had fun, and it was our country. We said, okay, so I, I'm not sure. But I was telling her the whole time, I said, gee, Julie, there's no... There's no, where are we going to swim? Where are we going to say, don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. Anyways, so we didn't give up. We didn't give up. A year after that thing failed, I decided to go back what I used to do for a living, which was the transaction business, the investment banking business, the consulting business. So I rejoined one of the global consulting firms. I established the Ethiopian practice called Ernst & Young. Ernst & Young is one of the world's largest professional services firms. Today, actually, they have 250,000 employees. Okay, so I started Ethiopian practice. Ultimately, I, I run the East African business for the M&A business. We had a lot of different roles. Anyways, the point, though, is we didn't give up, even back then. So today, when we see a lot of these opportunities, the challenges we face today is nothing compared to what we faced 20 years ago. I mean, to go even to Akaki, there was this two-lane narrow road. You had to share the road with the donkeys, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, now I, f I drive almost every weekend to Adama on that beautiful express road, right? So a lot has changed in Ethiopia, but there's a lot coming up. So anyway, I, went, I took 11 minutes to explain how <laughs> I got here, but in, in brief, this is how I ended up in Ethiopia, wow, okay? Wow, wow, wow. There's a lot of diaspora men in here, very... Uh hopeful right now with, with how things could turn out. <laughs>